Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 45001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. In this video, I'm going to cover Clause 6.2, OH&S Objectives and Planning to Achieve Them. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organisation system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Okay, let's get started. Let's take a look at what clause 6.2 wants us to do. There are a couple of subclauses in 6.2, so I will break each of them down separately for you. Now, subclause 621 is all about the establishment of the OH&S objectives. And by the way, you can call them anything you want. Objectives, goals, targets, KPIs. This is completely up to you. For consistency, I'll refer to objectives throughout this video. This subclause states that the organisation shall establish OH&S objectives at relevant functions and levels in order to maintain and continually improve the OH&S management system and OH&S performance. When I read this, I see that these objectives aren't just high level corporate objectives or just operational objectives. These objectives are to be established at relevant functions and levels of the OH&S management system. So you might start with the corporate OH&S objectives and then they filter down to each department or function in the business and even where they apply to processes of the business. So as an example, if one of the company's OH&S objectives is to have 100% of workers across all departments trained in the new OH&S management system by November 30th, insert the year, there would be several departments or functions that would also require objective set to be able to meet this objective. Each department could then set their own objectives to ensure their team was trained by the November 30 deadline. Their objectives might be to train the project managers by September 30, train the site administrators by October 30, and then finally train the workers on project sites, including contractors, by November 30. Now, moving along in clause 621, it does state that the OH&S objective shall be consistent with the OH&S policy. Well, look at that. When we set our OH&S objectives, they need to somehow align with our intent and commitment that we documented in our policy. I would hope so. What a great way to ensure that our intent from our policy is met. Be sure to check out our video for clause 5.2 OH&S policy if you need a refresher. Then B states that the OH&S objectives are to be measurable or capable of performance evaluation. Another stroke of genius. Of course, when objectives are set, you need to be able to measure them or evaluate the extent to which they are being achieved. It's no good setting an objective and you're not able to monitor it. Make sure you collect the data and can generate the reports needed to track how well you are going in achieving your objectives. Otherwise, you don't have a clue where you're at. And then also, to make your objectives measurable, it's important to have a time frame. A time frame that you want to achieve your objective by. Just like in the example I used earlier, with all training to be conducted by November 30th insert the year. Then you know what you want to achieve and by when. I'm sure you've all heard of SMART goals. This helps you to set specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely goals. Then point C states to take into account applicable requirements. 
the results of the assessment of risks and opportunities, so C6122 and 6123, the results of consultation with workers, C clause 5.4, and where they exist, workers' representatives. First up, what are these applicable requirements? Well, we will determine these applicable requirements as other clauses are actioned throughout the standard. For instance, when you understand the needs and expectations of workers and other interested parties, as per clause 4.2, you may identify some applicable requirements based on what your interested parties expect from you. If this is the case, wouldn't it be beneficial to set an objective to ensure that this is met and met to a standard and time frame that's expected? For example, an interested party are your workers and they expect that they go home safe and healthy each day. So as per my previous example, set an objective to ensure that training is provided within a set time frame. Another clause where you will identify applicable requirements is in clause 613, determination of legal requirements and other requirements. As an example, here at Atoll, we have to meet compliance requirements for our training that the assessments meet exemplar global criteria, of which we are audited against. So an objective for us is 100% compliance to exemplar global performance criteria for each annual audit. And of course, please ensure that your consultation outcomes covered in clause 5.4 are considered. Wherever any type of risk or opportunity is identified, wrap it up in an objective so that it is clear and understood across the entire business. It's something solid to aim for. Right, then we move to D, where it states to be monitored. This is handy, of course. If you're going to set objectives, you need to monitor them to see the extent to which you're meeting them. Are you on track? If not, what can you do differently so that you can make changes in enough time to meet your objective by the set time frame? Then point E states that the objectives are to be communicated. That's it, just communicated. So this clause doesn't provide any other hints as to who to or how often. However, this does align with clause 7.4, communication, where it is up to the organisation to determine what, when, with whom, who and how to communicate. So if we apply the knowledge from clause 7.4, it is up to the organisation to determine the communication requirements of the oh &S objectives. Although clause 7.3 awareness does include the statement that workers shall be made aware of the oh &S objectives. So that's a big hint for you right there. If workers are to be aware of oh &S objectives, there's our answer right there as to what is to be communicated as part of clause 6.2, oh &S objectives. It is also a requirement in F that the objectives are to be updated as appropriate, meaning as or when the objectives do need to be updated as a result of change in the business, then do it. Objectives may not always stay the same. As the business changes, activities change, locations change, and tools and equipment change. So this will influence the objectives that have been set as well. Now we can move to subclause 622, planning to achieve oh &S objectives. This subclause states that when planning how to achieve its oh &S objectives, the organization shall determine A, what will be done, B, what resources will be required, C, who will be responsible, D, when it will be completed, E, how the results will be evaluated, including indicators for monitoring, and finally, F, how the actions to achieve oh &S objectives will be integrated into the organization's business processes. I love this. This means that the oh &S objectives that we set and document aren't to sit on the shelf and gather dust, or they're not to be pinned to the wall so everyone can walk past and just get a warm, fuzzy feeling. Not at all. You actually have to figure out what actions you are going to take to achieve the objectives. 
who is going to be responsible for these actions and whether you need any other resources such as people, knowledge, skills, equipment, training, and so on. And we've already talked about setting a time frame for these objectives as part of being measurable, which aligns nicely with the requirement for determining when the objectives will be completed by. Now, you just have to figure out how you will evaluate and monitor the results of the objectives to see how you are tracking with the objective set within the time frame set. And don't forget one of my favorite statements in the standards is that these actions to achieve the objectives will be integrated into the existing business processes. There shouldn't be a separate corner of the office for the objectives and their actions. Embed the actions in existing processes so the culture of this is just how we do things around here is created. The final requirement in the section of 622 is that the organization shall maintain and retain documented information on the OHS objectives and plans to achieve them. Okay, now that we understand what is needed, now we know that these OHS objectives, as well as the plans and strategies on how they will be achieved, are to be documented. So, what does all of this normally look like when it's documented? Normally what I see with the audit clients I visit is a table or matrix of some description. The objective is documented, including what is to be achieved and by when. This could be in a single column or over a couple of columns with the time frame separated. Then there are additional columns that reference the strategy of what will be done. Now this could be as simple as referencing a procedure or procedures. Other columns then might list who's responsible and then the monitoring or measurement that will be conducted, which may reference different reports or statistics. Okay. That's a great start. We now have documented OHS objectives as well as a plan on how they will be achieved. Develop what works for you. Keep it simple, real and relevant to the scope of your system and how you normally document within the business. Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate these requirements in your management system? Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.